Welcome back to the MOC course on Corporate Social Responsibility. My name is Aradhana Malik and I am helping you with this course. And uh, today we are going to wind up, in this lecture we are going to wind up the discussion on Corporate Social Responsibility and uh, sustainability, business corporate sustainability. So let's see what we have for you here. We have discussed a whole bunch of things on CSR and sustainability. We talked about the different initiatives. Hmm. We talked about the different standards. We, we talked about integrating sustainability with CSR. Now in this, I'm going to show you a very interesting tool that I have discovered. And that is the SDG camp compass for business action on the SDGs. SDG stands for Sustainable Development Goals. So this was developed by the Global Reporting Initiative, uh, United Nations Global Compact and WBCSD in the uh, in 2015. Okay. Now, why do the SDGs matter for business? Why should the Sustainable Development Goals matter for business? The SDGs define global sustainable development priorities and aspirations for 2030 and seek to mobilize global efforts around a common set of goals and targets. So the sustainable development goals are in the direction that the world is taking for the achievement of certain targets that have been established worldwide to provide some sort of a uniformity in achieving these, in alleviating the standards for the, for the entire world. Okay. Business is a vital part in achieving the SDGs. Companies can contribute through their core activities and we, this is directly from the, the compass. The compass uh, designers ask companies everywhere to assess their impact, set ambitious goals and communicate transparently about the results. This was a statement made by, I'm sorry, this was a statement made by Mr. Ban Ki-moon who is the, uh, who was the UN Secretary General. Okay. Now the so, uh, the objective of the SDG Compass is to guide companies on how they can align their strategies as well as measure and manage their contribution to the SDGs. The, the Compass provides a direction for organizations to see where they are headed, what they should be doing in order to align their efforts with the efforts of the rest of the world. Now, I will tell you something about, about such efforts. So, these efforts See, what happens is when we want to give back to society, why do we want to give back to society? Various reasons. One, we feel there is a need, you know, some, something, something happens directly to us, something affects us and we want to make sure the same thing, the same problem is not faced by somebody else. Then we feel that, that some efforts, some crisis occurs and more hands, more resources are required to deal with that crisis. So, we just jump in. So, various reasons exist. Now, as a result of these, these this diversity of reasons in the, in the social helping uh, realm to make it very, very simple, you know, when we want to provide help to those in need, this is what we think about, you know, where is there a need, what can I do, what is required right now and because of this different uh, uh, efforts, different organizations, different uh, activities spring up sporadically in different places. Now, when we talk about the SDG compass, when we talk about the sustainable development goals guiding us, we are not t taking away the, the importance or we are not minimizing or, or reducing the importance that needs to be given to emergencies. Something happens, there's, there's, there are flash floods, there's a landslide, there's an earthquake. Uh, by all means, we all have to stop everything we are doing and rush to the scene of the accident and see how we can help the people there best. Oil spills, immediately we need to go there and whatever, you know, we need to pull in our resources and direct our resources to minimizing the damage for the environment. Forest fires cause a lot of pollution, lot of damage to the environment, again we need to jump in. Glaciers melting causes a lot of flooding, etc. So all of those things need to be taken care of. Diseases, huh. so I mean all of these things require immediate intervention. So what the SDGs propose or what the SDG compass proposes is that we should not, you know, keeping aside all of these emergencies, when we are dedicating ourselves to continuously contributing to the, the uh, adoption of or to, to helping the world, uh, um, you know, develop 
uh, or uh, to to uh, to um, 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 I am sorry, I am at a loss for words. So, you know the, the SDG compass uh, proposes that when we are committed to implementing the sustainable development goals in the hope that we will be able to contribute to the uniformity in improvement of the, the world around us, then what we need to do is we, know we need some sort of a direction. So, certain steps have been uh, proposed there. Hmm. And the steps that have been proposed by the SDG compass are the first step is understanding the SDGs. What are these SDGs? What are these sustainable development goals? Now, what happens is now like in the previous two lectures, even in this lecture, what I am going to do is I am going to bring the slides down like this and I am going to show you a number of websites that you will see and I will give you a list of the hyperlinks. One second. So, here I have pulled up all the hyperlinks in the correct order. All right. So, what are the sustainable development goals? This is the SDG website. Then you can learn more about each sustainable development goal and how businesses can contribute to these development goals from here. So, you just click say no poverty. Okay, and then you can click on each one. Okay, the role of business. So, how do you end poverty in all forms everywhere? Hmm. The key themes addressed by this SDG here they are given here. Availability of products and services for those on low incomes, earning wages and benefits, economic development in areas of high priority access to quality um, essential health care services, access to wash, electricity available, WSH sorry, um, um, uh, electricity availability and reliability and non-discrimination. Some examples of key business uh, actions and solutions are given here. You can develop products and services tailored for poor customers. For example, mobile based money transfer services for unbanked customers. I'm sorry, maybe I can increase the size. So, you know, this is such an amazing example of, I mean, the, the SDG compass gives you such clear direction. You know, when we talk about the SDG compass, it's giving you such clear direction for what businesses can do point by point, you know. So, the website address is sdgcompass.org. You can look it up, but again, I will give you all these details. So, these are examples uh, of how you can contribute to SDG goal number one. You can improve access to basic goods and services for people living in poverty. For example, through core business, policy dialogue and social investment, you can recruit, train and employ local community members including those living in poverty and integrate them in your value chain as producers, suppliers, distributors and vendors. Get the small merchants, get the small vendors, include them in your value chain, identify people who are doing a good job but may not have a brand. So what? And you know e-commerce is such a wonderful way of doing this. I've seen you know a lot of unknown names spring up on these e-commerce websites and you just take a chance. Occasionally, you will just take a chance, okay, this looks presentable. Somebody is helping them present all of their wares in a presentable manner and then you, you on an instinct, you know, sometimes, sometimes we fail, sometimes we get products that are not durable, but usually I found through different e-commerce websites, uh, you know, I have been able to get products that I would not have found in markets. Why? Because they are there, you can, at the click of a button, you can order something, you do not have to go to the market, hunt for a million things. You just order something that is, you know, for which you can take a small risk, you know, depending on, on how much you want to spend. And if it comes and if it works really well, then, then great, then you go and order some more. So, um, you know, so all of these things, I mean, you can encourage people who are really doing good work and maybe if you are an e-commerce company or even if you are a regular uh, uh, FMCG company, maybe you could include the wares of these people and promote them on your own website. You know, I mean, I am not, again, different companies have different uh, um, ways of reaching out to the customers and different ways of selling their products. I am not trying to interfere with that or to suggest something different from that. All I am saying is that it would not hurt to include these people 
test out their quality and if the quality is good why not okay so that is one thing hmm. invest in business driven poverty eradication activities for example develop, develop a living wage policy partner with civil society networks to provide education and entrepreneurial skills training that is something that you could do you teach you teach a you give a person a fish and you feed the person for one meal i have forgotten the exact saying but it's it's almost something like this you give a person uh, a fish you feed the person for one meal or for one day you teach a person to fish and you feed the person and his family for an entire lifetime so you know so that is what it means you develop entrepreneurial skills you teach people you encourage them to to take risks and do things on their own and and they will be uh, you know they will uh, uh, be able to earn their living much uh, better so you know these are some examples here again you know you can see so you can go through this website and see key business indicators are given examples of key business tools that you can use for achieving or for incorporating um, uh, this particular goal or for for contributing to helping with this goal you can use the un global compact oxfam poverty fit footprint tool i'll show you all this un guiding principles of business and human rights reporting framework women's empowerment principles including uh, inclusive business primer some of these i'll give you uh, examples of but then all of these are available at the business tools link through this website so you can download the pdf of this sdg goal and read this in great detail amazing amazing thing that sdg uh, you know this SDG compass has done. So step one is understanding the SDGs. Now the 17 SDGs are there, so the details are there. Then understanding the business case. Business case means why should you be investing in it? What are you getting out of it? The baseline responsibilities for business. These are discussed in the previous lecture. So let's see what we have in each of these. Understanding the business case. We've seen the the. Uh, uh, the SDGs. Now, what do we mean by understanding the business case? You identify future business opportunities. You enhance the value of corporate sustainability. You strengthen stakeholder relations and keep uh, pace with the policy developments. Stabilize societies and markets. Use a common language and shared priorities. All of this is from the SDG campus. I have just summarized what they have said for your benefit here. Okay, then identifying future business opportunities what do we mean by identifying future business opportunities you could incorporate innovative technologies to increase energy efficiency maybe i can do this it will become a little easier for you to see okay so innovative technologies to increase energy efficiency renewable energy energy storage green buildings and sustainable transportation substitution of traditionally manufactured and processed products by ict uh, information and communication technologies and other technology solutions that reduce emissions and waste, meeting the needs of the large and mostly untapped market for products and services, including in healthcare, education, energy, finance, and ICT, that can improve the lives of the 4 billion people who currently live in poverty. Okay, how do you enhance the value of corporate sustainability? You can introduce taxes, fines, and other pricing mechanisms to make current externalities become internalized to the business this again happens at the at the policy level but this can also be internal to a business this will further strengthen economic incentives for companies to use resources more efficiently or to switch to more sustainable alternatives you can encourage the young generation and enhance value for employees through employee engagement leading to an increase in employee morale and productivity you can tap into the feel good factor for customers through sustainable business practices okay how do you strengthen stakeholder relations and keep pace with policy developments the benefits of doing so are you improve trust among stakeholders you strengthen the license to operate you reduce legal reputational and other business risks and you build resilience to costs or requirements imposed by future legislation okay then how do you stabilize uh, societies and markets you alleviate the quality of life and enhance the purchasing power then when people are able to spend more they end up spending more and you sustain um, so so they spend more and they contribute to the profits of your business the second thing you can do is sustain natural resources that companies depend on for production the input needs to be you know at the same level as the uh, the the consumption so if you are consuming a resource make sure you 
you uh, you um, uh, feed into it okay you replace it you replenish it all right and we've been talking about this so i'm not going to go into it again uh, going to it again foster accountable and well governed institutions as well as open and rule based trading and financial systems thereby reducing the costs and risks of doing business okay use a common language and shared purpose when you standardize accountability measures you are contributing to transparency you are encouraging you are enhancing transparency which leads to credibility the amount of faith people have in your organization the the belief they have in your organization their willingness to invest in your organization their willingness to buy from you and partnerships with other organizations who see you as a good organization okay second step is defining priorities you map the value chain to identify impact areas select indicators and then define data and define your priorities how do you map the value chain to identify impact areas you examine each segment of the value chain falling within the scope of the assessment to identify areas where the company's core competencies technologies and product portfolio currently or potentially contribute positively to the implementation of one or more sdgs then the company's activities directly or indirectly across the entire value chain may have current or potential negative impacts on one or more of the sdgs and you need to identify this as well so what are you good at and what are you doing that can damage the environment okay or that can prevent you from contributing to to the to one or more of the sustainable development goals okay then you select tools so various tools are given here i'll show you these tools very quickly because we need more time to finish this anyway scope 3 evaluator is a free web based tool from greenhouse gas protocol and quantis that makes it easier for companies to measure report and reduce emissions through their value chain then the next one is the social hotspots database hmm so it's a unique resource for supply chain social impact investigation it helps you evaluate the social impact of uh, the of the supply chain so you can use this you can go through this the third one here is the human rights and business country guide hmm. okay the human rights and business country guide and then uh it's a partnership initiative hosted by the danish institute for human rights in collaboration with partners uh, all around the world so you can see different country reports here then the the uh, world business council for sustainable development has developed a global water tool it's a free publicly available resource for identifying corporate water risks and opportunities you know what are the risks and opportunities as far as you know if you are using water so what what are the risks and opportunities by comparing your sites with the best available water sanitation population and biodiversity information on a country and watershed basis that's how deep they've gone into uh, they've gone uh, regard, you know uh, during the development of this tool the tool allows you to answer the following questions how many of your sites are in extremely water scarce areas i'm reading directly from the website let me increase the size here maybe you'll be you will be able to follow it too hmm. how many of your sites are in extremely water scarce areas which sites are at greater greatest risk how will this change in the future how much of your total production is generated from your most at risk sites how many of your employees live in countries that lack access to improved water and sanitation how many of your suppliers are in water scarce areas now and will be in 202 uh, 2025 2025 so you know you can actually go through this tool and see i mean you know this is another amazing initiative all right then you have the poverty footprint tool a unique tool to assess the business impacts on sustainable development okay so you can see here as the role of the private sector in in development expands the poverty footprint may help us ensure their contributions are making a difference in the fight against poverty are you helping but uh, reduce poverty or not through your efforts so you can go through this tool and see you know this is this is another amazing initiative 
uh, and of course you have the rest of the business tools here there's an inventory of business tools that is given here you can go through them aqueduct uh, aqueduct uh, water risk catalyst i'll just show this to you i'm not going to show you aries artificial intelligence for ecosystem services um, aws international water stewardship standard you know various things are given here biodiversity in the global water tool so you can see that all of these tools are available for the businesses that are operating that are trying to contribute to the fight in uh, preserving our natural environment then the the next thing after you've selected the tools for mapping high impact areas across the value chain then you engage the stakeholders tell them what you're doing and get them on board then you select the indicators and collect data the logic model here you know is used okay logic is the inputs what resources go on in that could positively or negatively affect the SDG? Let me, okay, I think I've increased it too much here. Okay. Hmm. Activities, what activities are underta undertaken? What, um, what is outputs? What is generated through those activities? What uh, outcomes? What changes in the target population occurred? Impacts, what are the changes as a result of those outputs? For example, there are some examples here. So we've already seen the global water tool. The next one in this is the aqueduct. It's still loading, I'm sorry. Yeah, I couldn't get this to open. However, you have the water risk atlas. That is, uh, again, uh, designed by the World Resources Institute. So you can launch the interactive map and you can see where there is a risk of the water, uh, uh, you know, the water table falling. Then uh, you have some other things here. You have the India water tool that you can download. This technical note describes the specifics of the indicator data and calculations underpinning. Okay. The IWT 2.0 allows companies, government agencies and other users to identify their water risks, prioritize their water management actions, plan for sustainable water management and address water risks that confront agriculture, industry, households and the natural environment in a given river basin. Amazing, you know, this is specific to India, different parts of India. So that's really, really very, very interesting. Then, uh, okay. The next one is the aqueduct indicators. So you have global maps 2.1 indicators. This uh, working paper explains the methodology. Uh, okay, so you have uh, okay, so you have these indicators, huh? The global maps indicators. Then the next one here is the W World Wildlife Fund DEG water risk filter, which is something I have pulled up here. Okay, I'm sorry, this is still not loaded the water risk filter. So you can see this then, hmm. then you have the rest of the business indicators here. Okay. So you have inventory of business indicators, various types of business indicators, hmm. the GRI global reporting initiative, G4 financial services sector disclosures, GRI G4 electric utilities sector disclosures, hmm. women's world banking, gender performance indicators, etc. I mean, whole bunch of indicators is given here, GRI, G4 sustainability reporting guidelines is there, okay. Global compact Oxfam poverty footprint, uh, which is what we just saw, access to medicine index, okay. So this is something you can see here, okay. So these are different indicators, you select the one that you need to use. Okay, then you define priorities. You consider the magnitude, severity and likelihood of the current potential negative impacts, the importance of such impacts to key stakeholders and the opportunity to strengthen competitiveness through resource efficiency. Additional considerations include the likelihood that new regulations, standardization, market shortages of material or labor, supply chain disruptions, stakeholder pressure or changing market dynamics. Hmm over time may translate these negative impacts into costs or risks for the company. So you define your priorities and know what affects those priorities. Then you assess the opportunity for your company 
to grow or gain advantage from its current or potential positive impacts across the sustainable development goals this may include opportunities to innovate develop new products and solutions or target new market segments after you have done that here there are some ways some some uh, protocols that you can use to define your priorities let me show these to you okay this is the natural capital coalition uh, natural capital coalition the protocol natural capital protocol is a framework designed to help uh, generate trusted credible uh, and actionable information for business managers to inform decisions so it aims to support better decisions by including how we interact with nature or more specifically the natural capital so that is something that you can use here the the protocol is given here it can help you with operational legal and regulatory financing reputational and marketing and societal aspects of your business the details are here maybe you can see it when you have some time okay the next one is the natural capital coalition which is the organization that has developed the protocol so they have this protocol here then we have the social capital protocol hmm. so the protocol aims to clarify best practices boost the positive impacts of business and improve business credibility by integrating the consideration of social impacts and dependencies into performance management and decision making so you can go through this all right um step 3 is setting the goals you define the scope of goals and select key performance indicators define the baseline and select the goal type then you set the level of ambition you announce your commitment to sdgs i think we are running out of time so we will stop the discussion here we will continue the discussion in the next lecture which will be slightly shorter than this one but thank you very much for listening